Are you ready for this? Gonna be fun. You will not stand in my way. Frostborn hunger. This pleases me. I do not fear you, mortal. Your soul shall be mine. Don't make me laugh. He needs a boot. Oh, I do. Fill a shredding, baby. Let the battle begin. <laughs> So hello and welcome to the 31st episode of the Nexus Trolls, a podcast all about Heroes of the Storm. So I'm your host, Lions Daz Kilius, and I'm joined today by Liquid. How's it going, Liquid? Hi, it's going good. <laughs> <laughs> and and Mystic. Mystic, you can talk in the first person this week. Yeah, last week was uh, last week was kind of difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got some comments uh, after the show about how everyone was really impressed. You, you stuck through the whole thing. Um, Bacon in particular was particularly impressed that you stuck with it. Uh, your your parallel over there on the Gangbush Squad. Mm -hmm. So uh, guys, we got quite a bit. Not only in Blizzard news, but like the Nexus Trolls news this week. Because uh, Liquid, uh, for those of you who don't know, Liquid about a month ago started floating the idea of starting his own kind of spin-off uh, show called Troll and HGC. Uh, well, why don't let Liquid take away and tell us a little bit about that? I was enjoying story time. All right. <laughs> so, um, like Daz said, about a month ago, I, I realized that while Daz gave me this great platform to go over esports in my esports corner, there was still so much more that I wanted to talk about. And about that same time, I went and I was on the weekly Blizz uh, with um, with Bags and uh, man, what a horrible time to go blank on his co-host's name, but I'm totally going blank now. Anyway, so I was on the show with him and like we hit it off and we clicked and like everything was great and it was a really good show. I had a great time. We talked about uh, everything that had to do with uh, with Guaz. That's right. Thank you, Daz. So with Guaz and with uh, with Bags. So we had a great time, awesome show, and um, I started thinking, you know, man, I really have a lot to talk about when it comes to esports. It's not always focused on HGC. It's not always focused on professional esports and Heroes of the Storm. I follow the amateur scene as, as well. Um, <clears throat> so I came to Daz and I was like, hey, man, you know it would be great? If we did a second show. But I'm really busy. I got a family and kids. I got to, like, try to make this work. So I said, what if we did it right after the Nexus Trolls. I could knock out two shows in a night. Wouldn't really impact uh, time with the kids because I usually put them to bed right after our show and like it would be great. And he's like, yeah, it's a great idea. Uh, how are we going to do all this? And so out of that came Troll and HCC, but not only Troll and HCC, but Trolls.gg, which is our new site that hosts both the Nexus Trolls and Troll and HCC. So I'm looking forward to it. Our first show is tonight. Bags is in chat right now checking out this show. And then we're going to go live right around 9.30. It'll probably be 9.30 every every uh, Wednesday night, um, excepting for the case where we go a little long, just because I want to refresh my drink before we get started. So. Which puts a little bit of pressure on us and gets a mm -hmm. little bit of a time cap, and hopefully will keep us on pace to properly get through the show in a timely right. manner. I mean, that's two hours, though, right? I, I don't know. Think, I think we've only hit two hours one time, and that was mostly me talking that time. <laughs> yes, about esports, ironically enough. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, as Liquid was saying too, so you might notice that a lot of our links have changed from the Nexus Trolls dot com to Trolls GG slash the Nexus Trolls or something based around Trolls GG. Uh, you check the show notes, but generally, if you wanted to find anything about you know the Nexus Trolls or trolling HGC, you can head over to Trolls dot GG. That's going to be the podcast network. Uh, we actually have another show we might be doing a lot, maybe a few weeks from now. We might start that up. Uh, a little bit of a teaser there. We can t tell you about it. Maybe an official announcement in a couple of weeks from now. But yeah, so check it out. So now the Twitch channel is now twitch.tv slash trollsgg. If you're subscribed before, you'll still be subscribed. Uh, the name won't impact you there. But if you try and type, you know, twitch.tv slash the Nexus Trolls in your browser, you're going to get, uh, you know, like, oh, oops, there's nothing there anymore. Uh, and our email has actually changed as well. Uh, podcast at the Nexus Trolls .com will still come to us. We're just phasing it out uh, in favor of the Nexus Trolls at trolls.gg. So that being said, before we start each show, we always try and thank our patrons. Ironically enough, the patron link has changed as well. It's now patreon.com slash trollsgg. If you're looking to support us or Troll and HGC, you can do so over at patreon.com slash trollsgg. The shows will both always be free. If you're looking for a way to support the show, head over there and you can do so there. So, 
that was our big piece of news, person news off the docket. However, there's been quite a bit that was just dropped today, ironically enough. We were sitting there. I know that um, TBKs were, I think, tweeted out something along the lines of, like, as they do, the, the Lords of the Storm do their show today as well. Be like, what are we going to do tonight? And as he was going to grab a beer, lo and behold, Blizzard drops a, a balance patch for us. Gives us some fodder to talk about. I was a little bit worried two weeks in a row without a balance patch. I thought that this is going to be, like, a sign of things to come. But looks like we will have something to talk about uh, a little later on in the show. Um, but first, too, I didn't even know about this until mm, maybe 10 minutes ago. Liquid and Mystic told me that, hey, there's some cryptic little thing in the Blizzard launcher. Mystic, you want to tell us about that, bud? Well, there's a little teaser for potentially, like, the next hero. It's uh, three candles that are lit in a very... It seems to be, like, a very Diablo-esque room. It's on a wooden table. There's, like... It seems to be the background of some sort of castle. So it's going to be uh, Deathwing, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Fire, it, it means it's got to be death. <laughs> it, it's funny you mention that because that is actually, somebody tweeted that out as a joke and uh, somebody else responded, please no, like that's just totally mm-hmm. not fair. Yeah, so the prevailing idea, and this is being mentioned in chat as we speak here, is that it's going to be Deckard Kane. You know, it might not even be a hero, it might be Deckard Kane as an announcer pack, too, is, is the other thing people have been talking about. I don't know how you get Deckard Kane necessarily into the game properly. It's going to be definitely a unique hero, if nothing else. Uh, for those of you who don't follow Diablo, Deckard Kane is kind of like the old wise man in Diablo, right? He's like a decrepit old guy who's, you know, the keeper of lore type thing. But that being said, I don't know how he'd actually do in battle. Do you guys play a lot of Diablo? Have you guys played Diablo 3? Like, how is Deckard Kane? filter into the situation does he actually get into any of the action there or is he more just behind the scenes storytelling well spoiler alert here he does get into the action but since you know like you said he's a decrepit old man he's not really suited well for action so he uh he he perishes in battle unfortunately big spoiler alert for those of you that are looking to pick up your Diablo 3 a little late here I guess it's been out for a few years so it's not like people haven't had their chance to get through the content um, but so that'd be kind of cool it's something that people have been asking for for a long time along with Deathwing Kel'Thuzad and I don't know some other popular ones too maybe uh, Alex Straza uh, or ones that you constantly hear about too so it'll be nice to tech, tick one off the list and maybe get Deckard gain into the Nexus so we also have a second anniversary celebration event. Turns out <laughs> this game is about two years old, not including obviously like the tech alpha and the beta. Uh, so they've got a little bit of a celebration event. It's during the week of May 30th, which started yesterday, to June the 12th. Oh, I say week, but it's actually, I guess, more like a week and a half, two weeks. So you get a daily quest. You can play one game in AI, quick match, unranked or ranked, and you get a common loot chest. You get that every day. So, nice little bonus there. I love getting my loot chests. Blizzard's on to something with this loot chest thing. It's got me playing the game more than I was before, which I didn't think was possible. And there's also an event quest as well. So, if you play three games during the course of this week and a half, two weeks, uh, versus AI, quick match, unranked, or ranked, uh, you get an anniversary portrait, spray, and banner. Kind of cool. Some extra free stuff. Uh, You guys, have you finished your quest yet? Probably, eh? Actually, I haven't. I've been playing with my wife. We're going to uh, finish it tonight, though. I've just done the daily loot chest. I haven't done the other part of it just yet. It's just playing three games. You haven't played three games in the last couple of days? I, we only played two yesterday. Uh, you guys are slacking. I, I've been busy. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to get ready for a brand new show, dude. Yeah, I know. You, you, liquid, That's liquid, a little bit of credit. Liquid's <laughs> been up late. <laughs> stressing about like all sorts of stuff getting everything great for troll and hgc so can't blame you there um so when you guys want to tell us about this real life loot box context because i have no idea what that is it's in our show notes here sure sure i got that so um uh, blizzard is offering a chance to win some real real life loot ah, wow real life loot chests um i will go ahead and put the link all well, the links in the show notes check it out it's a blizzard link um on wishpond.com Basically, you can win a loot chest, which includes a pint glass, a banner magnet, a marker, uh, some sprays and emoji sticker sheets, some pins, a keychain, a shirt, um, some art, some hero and skin codes, and a loot chest code that'll give you two loot chests. 
All you have to do is like them on Facebook, follow them on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, share on Facebook, tweet on Twitter, and then submit your entry. I mean, I've basically done all of that already anyway, so I'm just going to fill out the form and say, yep, it's done, and uh, move on. So um, pretty cool little event, though. I know I was super jealous of everybody that got one of those real-life loot chests. Yeah. Well. And oh, my God, I got to go back because Bags in chat said, what about a kobold? Dude, that would be the ultimate troll if they <laughs> used a kobold. You no take candle, and that's what it was. Oh my god, I would oh, love it. Yeah. Could do. You don't take those candles, right? <laughs> I, the, the only, the, ironically enough, I, I never played WoW, but I know the Cobalt reference from Hearthstone because <laughs> there's a couple of uh, cards with Cobalt in them. So, um, we've also got the Heroes of the Storm soundtrack that was released. So if you don't get enough of it in game and you want to put it on your iPod or phone or whatever. You can head over to YouTube. They're on Spotify and iTunes, the full-length tracks of everything. I'm not going to talk about it too much there because I'm sure, you know, we probably hear about enough about it in-game. And it's a pretty well-produced, like, soundtrack. Don't get me wrong. and But uh, I don't I don't feel the need to, to take it with me outside of the game. And I'm sure most of you probably don't as well. Um, we did have some interesting documents that were released Uh some community content one by by psalm i always want to say psalm but it's just psalm uh he released this crazy document i'm calling it psalm's bible and we got the link for it again in the show notes here and you can take a look for it um it's very popular on reddit right now uh but basically he's got a crazy long document called psalms heroes of the storm library it goes over so much stuff in the game a tier list for every map in the game so that it breaks down each hero by category melee assassin assassin specialist healer into like s tier a tier b tier or tier tier one tier two etc uh he also goes over a whole bunch of different talent builds with links to videos for each for a bunch of the different heroes a bunch of how to's as well as some other great nuggets in there so if you're looking to try and like get a little bit more insight in specific heroes or even battlegrounds it's a fantastic resource. I haven't been able to get through all of it. And Psalm, I guess he's been collating this must have been for a while now. Um, some of the interesting stuff that I noted from it here too is like it, it, some of the S tier heroes definitely vary per map. And for those of you that just say like, oh hey, like Anubrak's got like the top win rate for tanks. He's probably the best one on all the battlegrounds. Well, a- actually he is. But in a lot of cases, you might get these niche heroes that are S tier on certain maps that may not be as good in others. So it's definitely worth a check out. Um, but yeah, spoiler alert, Anubarak is S tier, I think on every map or pretty close to it. Maybe not so much after uh, today's balance patch changes, but there's that. Um, so go ahead. I was just going to say my, my one concern with things like this, like first of all, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I flipped through it. I looked through it, like ton of great information there. My only concern is when you tend to put this much work into something like that, uh, it quickly falls out of date, especially with the patch cycle that we get here. Well, right? I, and so like, that's the only thing I'm worried about. Well, I feel bad for him. The nice thing is it is a Google doc, so it's a live document. So I'm, a, but the problem is he'll have to maintain it to keep it up to date. Right. Cause even, you know, a day after, I think this was maybe yesterday, the day before that he released this, We've already got a balance patch. You know, we've got right. some nerfs. We've had some buffs that can drastically, as we know, change how heroes play. So uh, he'll have to update this constantly. But he does put, if I'm not mistaken, in the tier list what it was, uh, the, the patch that it's on. Yeah, it says as of whatever the patch is. Right now it says the D.Va patch. So he at least he can get a bit of a timestamp, you know, when it's at least applicable until and, and make your decisions based on that. Mm-hmm. So we've also got another cool document too. Ryoma released a laning guide too. Well, actually he didn't release, he updated it because I think I saw this several months ago too. It's pretty cool. It gives you um, like a visual, uh, sp- I want to say spreadsheet, but it's almost like a guide. It shows you like all the, la- the solo laning heroes on the Y axis, all the solo laning heroes on the X axis. And then if you like look down and match them up, it shows like who matches up well against whom. So you can say, okay, like you look at Alarak, you look at Falstad, and you see, okay, Alarak's got a 90% chance to beat Falstad in lane. And it's kind of cool because then you can look and you say, okay, like a lot of it, when it, when whenever I'm playing too, I'll be like, oh crap, okay, so I'm I'm playing Dahaka, I'm going up against Chen, like what are my chances? <laughs> There's so many different permutations, it's hard to keep them straight in your head. Well, Ryan has got a really great tool for you. Not only can like look up to see who you pair up well against, but he also has 
tips on like how to lane, you know, if you're Dahaka against Chen, like what to use when to try and get your maximum value in lane there too. So it's a pretty cool document. It doesn't have all the heroes. I know Probius wasn't in there. Um, Ryoma does say that he doesn't play every single hero in the game, and he just put like stuff in here for for who he's uh, he's up on. But still, it's a very useful little quick guide. You can almost print it off like a cheat sheet too, and see who can lane up well against whom. Uh, and yeah, I'm not sure if you guys have had a chance to take a look at it, but um, it's definitely something I'm gonna have on the side, like, even even in a draft and something, just to kind of like quickly like reference to see, you know. I mean, obviously it's his opinion, but it's a pretty good opinion from what I've seen so far. Yeah, no, it's a it's a good document. Um, both documents are actually good. I, I everybody that listens to our show should at least check them out. You, you don't have to take it as like gospel, but definitely check it out. They're both really really well designed documents. Yeah, and, and Liquid was kind of pointing this out before, too. Any of these documents, not only can they potentially get out of date, but they are someone's opinion. Um, they're definitely not, like, the be-all, end-all. They're not necessarily applicable for your play level as well. Um, you know, if you're a lower level versus, uh, if you're bronze versus a master player, certain heroes are going to play a lot easier than other heroes in different situations or harder in certain situations as well. So take things with a grain of salt. And this is, you know, coming from Ioma, who is a grandmaster player. So he does have his mechanics down pretty well. And, you know, it says, I was talking to Missy about before, apparently he thinks that Alarak can outlane Falstad 90% of the time. I'd argue that if I was on the Alarak, it would be probably reverse because I'm a horrible Alarak. So it doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean for everybody. So take it with a grain of salt. So guys, we are going to be moving now into Liquid's esports corner. However, Liquid, as you might have heard off the top, has his own esports show, which will be debuting after this. So this will be a bit more of a condensed version. We're still going to cover esports on the Nexus Trolls. However, we're not going to go as in-depth as we may have in the past. You can always catch uh, Troll on HGC. You'll be able to catch on iTunes and all the usual outlets and such, but also just live after this show as well. So that being said, I am going to cue the bumper. Hey yo, how you doing? It's time for Liquid's eSports Corner. That's right. You're going to want to stick around for this. All right, take away Liquid. All right, so uh, there is a ton to talk about tonight on Troll and HGC, specifically around Roster Apocalypse and some of the crazy stuff that's happened there. I will go into one thing I did predict on this show uh a couple of weeks ago and then again last week that King Caffeine and K1 Pro would move over to GFE. They did do so. Uh, I believe, let's see, I woke up this morning and saw that they announced that last night. So, um, and B stepped to disbanded. Now the important thing and the reason I want to bring that up here instead of going into it in the deep dive we're going to take later on in uh, Toronto HEC is because B step was in HGC Premier League and they disbanded, Blizzard decided to give Even in Death that spot. Even in Death being number one uh, from Open Division, automatically promoted into Premier League status. Um, if you read Reddit or Twitter, uh, two things I am guilty of, and it has been crazy to try and keep up the last couple of days just strictly around roster apocalypse and things like this happening. Um, there are a lot of people that are unhappy with this decision. I actually applaud Blizzard for this. Uh, they needed to fill the team with somebody. Right? They, they didn't want to play with seven teams. They needed eight. Um, and I think this was the right decision. They could have maybe said, all right, uh, even in death and important support, you guys have a playoff winner takes it. But they already did that in the open division playoff. And even in death already earned that number one seed over important support. So I, I think Blizzard did the right thing here. Also, Team 8 sponsored by Roll20, which is huge. Um, they needed a sponsor. How they got through the entire phase one without being sponsored is still beyond me. Um, but Roll20 now sponsoring Team 8. So uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, so uh, mid-season brawl, we will talk a little bit on this show next week. And we'll talk even more in depth on uh, Troll and HCC next week about that. But the important thing is we did find out today that mid-season brawl will be played on the patch that was just released today. And D.Va will be available. So two critical pieces of information for um for you know our listeners out there and everybody that has any care about midseason brawl at all to know um all right jumping into crucible as i mentioned uh even in death did not succeed in taking a spot in um hcc premier league so i guess i'll just start with north america first i was gonna go the other way but 
I already kind of spoiled that. So here we go. <laughs> uh, no tomorrow beat even in death four to one. Neventic beat imported support four to two. So both NA uh, Open Division teams losing out to their NA Crucible uh, opponents. EU, however, completely different story. Synergy uh, got got beaten by Team Zealot four one. But the story of the week. B genius getting absolutely spanked by Team Gang Gang four to nothing. So um, yeah, huge news. Both EU Cruise or both EU Open Division teams taking away spots in HGC Premier League. I'm excited. BKB is now back in the scene where he belongs, um, and I can't wait to see what those two teams do now that they're in there. I think the top three are it. So so BKB said when he was interviewed. They're aiming for a 3-4 finish in Phase 2. Um, I could see that. I think breaking 3 might be a little tough just because the top 3 in EU are really strong right now, but we'll see how that goes. And Korean Crucible kind of went the way of the North American Crucible. Blossom beating RRR 4 nothing and, and maintaining their spot in HCC Premier League. And Team Raven beating Cluster UBC 4-1. So really EU was the only team to have their Open Division mm -hmm. teams break into the Premier League. But if you watch the Crucible games, and I happen to watch all of them I could find, I could not get my hands on Chinese Crucible games, which is really disappointing me. Blizzard, please. We need more out of China. We need more out of the minor regions. Come on now. It's the um, great, great firewall of China, right? Right? Well, but, yeah, it's, it's so hard to get Chinese esports out um, for some reason. And, and it's not always that way. It's really weird. Um, but what's interesting is watching Korea, NA, and EU, oddly enough for me, the EU Open Division teams clearly had their shit together. And, like, if you watch Korea, like, I expect more out of the Koreans, right? And, and you know, part of that is, like, E-Star and – or not E-Star, but um, CE – wait, no, I had that right the first time. Man, what's wrong with me? I have too many teams floating in my head. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you keep them all black. straight in general. Dude, I'm, like, I'm losing my mind because there's so many – because now I'm tracking the Open Division teams too. Um, but anyway, the Korean professional teams are just, like, a step above everybody else, right? Like, that's what we've grown accustomed to. And I expected the same out of their Open Division teams, and, and I just did not get it. Um, instead, we saw Zealot and TGG just absolutely dominate the games they were in and looked like professional teams that deserved to be in Premier League. So that's pretty cool. Um, we'll go more in-depth in that on, uh, on Troll and HCC, too. I know Bags has some, some uh, spots he wants to show clips while we talk through it um, today. So it, it'll be pretty cool. I'm, uh, I'm excited. So Liquid... What are they yes. doing with the standings now that, especially in EU, like obviously NA and Korea is not so, as much of a deal, but EU, like we've got teams that are jumping into Premier that haven't won or lost a game, right? Like how do they how do they end up shaking into the schedule in the standings? So two things. Uh, Milk Fat answered a question the other day on Twitter um, saying that uh, Phase 2 starts June 23rd. Um, people that are already familiar with the schedule knows midseason brawl ends June 22nd. So they're jumping right into phase two, which is all well and good from a like a rules perspective. But the reality is they're not going to play games the day after. There's going to be at least one bye week or two bye weeks. Uh, the rules haven't been published yet. I've been looking everywhere for them. I've been asking for them. Um, DB Smiley's been asking for midseason brawl tiebreaker rules because those aren't even in the phase one rules. Like there's a couple of things that are really um, missing right now. So I, I can't answer that. My suspicion, though, based on how it looks like, like the only way to really do that is to reset the standings, right? And say, okay, uh, maybe you maintain your placement. So for the initial, like, where you guys are one through eight on day one of phase two, um, even in death is number eight. Team Gang Gang is number seven and team zealot is number eight right and like you do that kind of thing just for the initial hey these are your placements right now but then you start playing games right and everybody's at zero and zero or zero zero and zero because they do that weird i won by three games i won by two games i won by one game thing uh and then boom you start right and whoever wins wins Whoever loses, loses, and that's your record going forward. So after week one, we'll have some teams that are 2-0. and oh, We'll have some teams that are 1-1. and one, We'll have some teams that are 0-2, oh right? But you, you reset the standings. That, that's the only thing I can think of them doing. Um, and that's a natural breaking point, right? They're going from phase one to phase two of the 2017 HCC season. It, it's like saying there's two seasons, but there's really not. You know, phase two ends at BlizzCon. 
which is the world championship. So, you know, I, I guess that's what, uh, what I see going forward. It seems to make the most sense. So there's one game that I watched in the Crucible that was one of the most epic games I think I've seen in a long time. Now, we've already told you who won each, each bit, so it's not too much of a spoiler. I believe it was Synergy versus Team Zealot, the final game on Towers of Doom. Oh, my God, that game was epic. If, if you're going to watch one, watch that one. Because the ending was pretty phenomenal. I kind of want to spoil it, but I kind of want people just to go watch it on their own. Uh, there, right. there was an Abathur involved channeling towers, and it came down to the last tower shot. Definitely and, and, worth picking. Oh my out. god! Like that. That like. It, look, Zealot won four one. So even if they lost that game, they still had an, they still had another chance, right? But the ending to that game, like I'm, I was screaming at my TV, like, so. So for those that don't know, my let's wife just let's just say what this. happened. Well, spoiler right, alert: will, will, if, you will, will. if you don't if you don't if you don't want to hear it, just, just skip ahead just for an hour uh, for like for a minute or two. Five minutes or so, right? Yeah. All right. So, so 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 for those that don't know, my wife has started playing Heroes, and 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 she's slowly getting into it. And we start we've started like she'll watch now with me, and I'm like I'm going downstairs because I'd been for the whole weekend we've been watching it up here in the office where we play at the same time, and I'm like you know what this is a really intense series. For once, it looks like we're going to have a team get in. I'm going to go watch it downstairs. She's like, cool. I'm like, you should come downstairs. She's like, all right. So she comes downstairs, and I turn the game on. And I, and this is the first team that got in, right? Because this was the Saturday game. We just saw Team Re Raven beat Cluster UBC. Zealot was up 3-1 to one going into this game. But they were – like, that game went very back and forth. And at the very last – ultra spawn like one team was winning either way and i think it was a five on four because i think zealot was down a man but they're doing a battle at their all it was the two top altars right so yeah. zealot's battling at their altar and abathur is on uh team raven or yeah. not team raven. the cores were so low that it was three to four so yeah, like, like the next it, tower shot won like whoever got it. first like, and there was a was dual done. tower spawn so whoever could race their tower first like it win. literally came down to whoever clicks this first wins so there's a, a, a five on four happening on one side and Synergy got a kill. So now it's a four on four happening. But Abathur in the meantime ports to Synergy's tower, right? And uh, I can't remember his name, but whoever was playing Zeratul on Zealot realized, you know what, I can sneak away and go get this. And he walks over long ways, like through the boss over to the other tower and sees Abathur, ports in, kills Abathur, channels the altar before anybody from synergy goes oh shit we gotta go stop him and gets the altar and wins the game it was like the most epic thing i've ever and i'm like jumping off my couch i'm like they did it they did it oh my god they're in ah! <laughs> and i'm not like i'm not even a huge fan of team zealot like team gang gang was the team i really wanted to get in but i'm screaming about team zealot because here's this open division team that made it into hcc premier league and i was going nuts on my couch it was awesome it was the best like finish to a game you could have hoped for for sure spoil spoilers over uh, so you can take the earmuffs off uh, i mean i don't know how you'd know to take the earmuffs off because i <laughs> you, you have to hear me say that but yeah that was definitely an awesome game i watched a few and that was one of the best ones i've seen in a while it's even up there with um blizzcon from a couple of years ago where uh dunk train and and crew took murky that was one of the best games i've seen in a while too so okay so again Liquid's going to be going into so much detail on esports, along with bags, after the show's done around 9:30 or so. So if you're if you're looking to get more detail on the esports and listen a bit more in depth coverage, check that out shortly after the show. And if you're listening to this after the fact, check it out. It'll be up everywhere: iTunes, uh, YouTube, etc. Okay, so we got a patch today, very shortly before the show. Thank God, because we were hurting for content. We were scrambling trying to figure out what we we're going to talk about today, but we do have a patch to talk about. So I'm going to go just in the order that Blizzard went through. We'll talk about everything. There wasn't a ton here. It was just slight tweaks here and there, but enough to talk about. Um, starting with Alarak. Now, Mystic, you were the most experienced Alarak player here. As I mentioned before, I'm a horrible Alarak player, so I probably am not the greatest person to comment on here. So why don't you take us through Alarak, the changes, and what you think about the new Alarak. Okay, so before this patch, Alarak's level 4 talent... Chaos Reigns, though it increased the damage on his Q depending on how many heroes you hit, 
And so it was it was a really big power spike for Alarak, and it did like a lot of damage. Like he'd pull you, and he'd do like half of your health, and you'd be like, wow, this hero's busted. But um, so Blizzard decided, hey, let's tone it down a little bit so he doesn't do that as hard. So they they changed it. Damage bonus for hitting 15 enemy heroes reduced from 60 to 50. Damage bonus from hitting two enemy heroes with a single cast of Discord Strike reduced from 60 to 50. And damage bonus for hitting three enemy heroes with a single cast of Discord Strike increased from 60 to 80. So they took some of the damage off of like the initial Q hit like for the early game and put it on later game. So they moved the scaling around a little bit. And then show a force, which was... Um, I believe if you hit all three basic abilities, then it does a little bit of extra burst after that. They increase that damage because I'm sure they saw it wasn't being picked as much as uh, Chaos Reigns. Let's see. And then for Pure Malice, they they saw that everybody was picking Rite of Rex Sheer because it was it was a really good talent if you could see like the order that people would die. So, you know, you mark an enemy, you'd say, all right, team, kill this hero. And then you kill him, you get a bunch of sadism, and then you keep going with the fight. Because the cooldown on it is 10 seconds. Only, It's only 10 seconds if you manage to kill the hero. Oh, wait, wait. Isn't the cooldown at like 3,000 seconds or something like that until you get the kill? Uh, Yeah, it's like 300 seconds. So if you mark them, however, if they do die, then it goes down to 10 seconds. So... You could use that multiple times at fight as long as you wait like the 10 seconds, right? So you mark hero, kill the hero, chase them down, and then mark them as they're about to die. You get more sadism, but they just nerfed that from 6% to 5% per enemy hero killed. Nothing I feel like nothing feels better than having that right Rick Shear on you and not <laughs> dying. <laughs> oh, yeah, right? yeah. You, you definitely want to stay alive if uh, you have that on you. Okay, uh, Cassia got some changes too. Uh, well, actually, just one small change to her charge strikes. That's the level one talent that once you hit a target, well, it's an activatable trait. So you press the one button, and as soon as you do that for the next eight seconds, your basic attacks are boosted by a certain percent, but they also chain to nearby enemy heroes. Now, one of the things that was pretty amazing using this is you could attack a fort. And the fort's pretty big, so the chain radius is fairly large once you're attacking a fort or a structure. So it was really easy to chain to that, you know, that chromie sitting behind the fort at quite a long distance. Uh, using that, you could put quite a bit of damage into their back line. So they've changed that so that it no longer bounces. Those attacks no longer bounce when attacking structures. So that does nerf it a little bit. Liquid's shaking his head. He's not, he's not too happy with this change. This is, this is not a required change, and I'll tell you why. Thrall has the same thing with Chain Lightning. There was no <laughs> reason to take this away. None. But Thrall, Thrall throws one out every, like, eight seconds or whatever, not every auto It's attack. not up all that. It's not It's not permanent. It's only up for, like, four seconds every 16 or something like that. I don't remember the exact numbers. Yeah, it's like nah, eight nah, seconds. This... It's a fairly long ability. Yeah. I can see why they did this. It's probably not really intended, right, to be like this. It's more for, like, team fights, not yeah. to cheese some cheese a fort and get splash damage off the fort. No, you're totally supposed to be able to cheese the fort and get splashed. <laughs> I love the cheesing fort. the fort, but I do have to agree that it was kind of broken in a sense. Um, Charge Strikes is really strong and it's still kind of really strong and Blizzard nerfed the damage on it, but they're like, maybe this isn't enough so I guess they just toss this on there as well. Yeah, I feel like this is an unintentional playstyle they're finding people were falling into with Cassia, so that's probably why they decided to modify that one slightly so ragnaros got some changes as well level one uh, level one sulfurous hungers the bonus damage upon quest completion was reduced from 100 to 90 and level four catching fire health regen reduced from 1.5 to 1.25 and cauterizing wounds at level 13 the healing bonus is reduced from 50 to 40 so a little bit of a, a nerf, or not, I want to say across the board, but you know, across a few talents here. Um, do you think this is going to change Old Man Ragnaros too much? Uh, yeah, the nerf I, that wasn't needed. See, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. That, that's exactly what I was about to say. Because <laughs> Ragnaros, like, he was really strong when he was released, and then so they, they 
they pegged him down a little bit, and then, you know, he's still really strong, and they kept doing it. They, they kept, like, chipping at his ankles. I know, right. Ragnaros doesn't really have any ankles. His, like, I don't know. His little his swirl. Little, yeah, his swirl. They're chipping at his swirl. Well, he chipped away at the ankles. Now they're not there anymore, right? <laughs> yeah. So and bad. then so they, like, kept chipping away at him. And then he got to, like, an okay, I'd like to say, a balanced spot where he was, like, strong-ish. But, uh, you know, you wouldn't pick him every game. But he was still, like, pretty strong. And then Blizzard's like, you know what? We're, we're still doing this. Let, let's just keep chipping at him. And then so, even though he got to, like, the balance spot, they're like, all right, we're, we're going to keep going. And then so, now now we're here, where he's not picked that often. He's still, like, okay. I'd say he's okay balanced. And then they're like, no, we're still chipping at him. And they just take away more stuff. He's like, I, I just, I, oh, my God. This was, if ever there was a balance change that did not have to happen. Ragnaros has a 30% pick rate. 30%. The dude used to be like 80%, right? Like he was involved all the time, no matter what, 30% now. Like he didn't need to get nerfed again. Blizzard, why? What? Just wait Wait until we get down into the tank changes. It's just like, <laughs> this, this patch is the most confusing balance patch I've ever seen from Blizzard. I'll give him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt to play the devil's advocate here. I almost wonder, sometimes you, you look at this, we don't, know what their roadmap is too right like maybe there's something that's coming out in the future that they could see that they need to you know slightly nerf certain things or game mechanics i'm not saying that's this is why they're doing it with ragnaros here but in other cases too because they know something else is coming out in the game like deckard kane right maybe deckard <laughs> i mean you can balance that at the time I know. that launches right like all you've done with this change is guarantee that we're not going to see ragnaros at the mid-season brawl that's yeah. what you've accomplished, Blizzard. My argument has Good no job. ankle has no ankles to stand on. <laughs> Blizzard, <laughs> Blizzard Blizzard chipped away at my ankles in my argument right? there like, too. I'm trying, Blizzard. I'm trying. <laughs> Still, I'm sure there's there's a reason for it. They wouldn't just do something for the sake of doing oh, I'm something. Sure, it's just, right? it's, I'm it's sure. not clear what it is. Is more what I'm getting at. Um. So Samuro got a small change to Windwalk. It's kind of it seems like a lateral change to me. Uh. So Windwalk. Got his cooldown increased from 13 to 15 seconds, so a two-second increase to his cooldown. However, the duration's also been increased by two seconds. So what this tells me is that you know it's up technically for for just as long. I guess you can be in stealth mode for longer, but if you use it and you engage, you can't disengage for 15 seconds using your wind walk again. So I don't know, Mystic. What do you what do you make of this? Is it just to try and change the playstyle slightly, and make it a bit more? Uh, dangerous to break the stealth, but you know, allow him to to gank someone a little bit uh, easier with giving an extra two seconds on the duration. Um, see what I see from this change is that so the cooldown is increased, but the duration is also increased. So it allows him to move between lanes, like without being seen, much easier. So with the duration being ten seconds, right? He almost has the same stealth ability as like nova and zeratul right where they're, they're stealth all the time but there there's like rarely any time where you want to be stealth for more than 10 seconds unless you're like vying for positioning the entire time but um so essentially what this is is like he can move between lanes a lot easier and then it's like you were saying it's much more punishing if you break the stealth like if you see Simro and you instantly break it right then let's just say he was invisible for past the one seconds of unrevealed ability uh two seconds so it's like th he he was invisible for three seconds and then you broke his stealth now instead of it being up for you know in 10 seconds it's now up in 12 seconds so it's much much more punishing if you break his stealth like the instant that you spot it than it was before so yeah here's, and here's what i'm confused about right like his win percentage is actually really high, and I don't see this as a nerf or a buff so much as a we're twisting both knobs at the same time to give you the same effect, but, like, change it. This one, I believe, to Daz's point earlier, is more we know something that's coming, and this will help <laughs> him in the future, right? Thanks, like, this one, that one, I completely agree with your point. Ragnaros, that, that's not why, but that one, I do believe that. Um, 
because of the way they changed both durations by two, the duration and the recharge cooldown by two seconds, right? Because it gives you, in essence, the same. If you look at over 30 seconds, you get the same amount of stealth. Um, I, but he's the highest win rate, so, like, did you really need to make that change? I guess this is a little bit of a small nerf to his level 20 talent, too, because um, it reduces the, the cooldown by six seconds. So instead of having it, your your wind walk cooldown be seven seconds, it's now nine at level 20, which, you know, makes a big difference. Having the six-second cooldown on your wind walk means you can pretty much pop in and out, like, almost willy-nilly, right? Well, you can be more, like, uh, more uh, Valera-like, right? Yeah. Because you can just so. pop it yourself, yeah. Yeah. Hey, okay, uh, Zuljin got a small change to Guillotine. Best patch note ever. <laughs> <laughs> Can no longer be interrupted. Once Cax, the axe is fallen. <laughs> and <laughs> this, uh, remind, I guess they made some changes to Thrall's ultimates maybe a few months back, I think, to do something similar. So you just can't be interrupted. So as soon as it goes off, that axe is falling down and hitting something. <laughs> what, do you, what did you guys take on Guillotine versus Tez Dingo in general? I liked guillotine because I like the wombo, uh, and so I, I could 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 like synergize it better. And as, I sucked with the other. As one. much as guillotine is cool, I just feel like Taz Dingo just synergizes with Zuljin's kit that much better. Like guillotine, yeah. Don't get me wrong; it's like really fun. It does a lot of damage, but Zuljin is like, you know, auto attacker. He gets low, and like guillotine is a good burst. But with Taz Dingo, you just have so much more auto so many more auto attacks that you do i'd say about as much damage or maybe if you play it right even more than guillotine on a target taz dingo is risky though <laughs> you gotta say that it's almost like a flip a coin if he's gonna die or not you know like in a lot of cases like the nice thing about taz dingo too is you can use it as a bit of an escape uh, as well as that crazy yeah. damage but you, you oftentimes you'll see the him go yolo right just taz dingo won't won't move and you're like hey well he's gonna die in a few seconds he's trying to get as much damage out as possible and uh i mean maybe that's not the right way to play but it's a very risky risk high risk high reward type uh i can never 20. find the balance with it that's that's the other reason i think i prefer guillotine give uh give guillotine this effect since we're since we're already like going into hey diva now has resets genji has resets and Li Ming was like the original reset right if guillotine kills the target, reset cooldown. Oh my god, everybody would take it. It would be over. God, <laughs> are you kidding me? Like that would be the go-to at that point because they would just wombo it, right? It's the mop-up talent say, too, yeah. right? You go, all right, well we're gonna go apoc, or no, you know what you do? You go etc diva, Ragnaros is crappy as he is. He's still all right, um, and and uh, uh, Zul Jin, and then you bring a healer along. Um, you don't even need a wombo. You just have the mosh put up and you just well, get one guy right? low, throw it down, reset, throw it down again, yeah, reset, true. throw it down. But think about it, right? Because I've, I saw there was a video, someone threw out a video on YouTube and posted it to Reddit the other day, uh, ETC with D.Va, where mosh pit followed by um, self-destruct, like just wiping teams. But think self-destruct plus Ragnaros' uh, Sulfurous Smash plus um, Guillotine, man, like not only would you get the resets but you'd probably wipe most of the team anyway yeah. but might be a little overkill make it such a such a better heroic <laughs> like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to wombo it or like yeah it's yeah. wombable at that point right instead right. of just like you, and you can throw it you can you can use it more like Li Ming's beam at that point oh you're yeah. low die sucker yeah T taz dingo on the other side is very counterable to a quick gorge a cocoon <laughs> A lot of like damage over time type abilities right. too. You throw down like a you know one new before. Nara spear and you're done. Yeah, like there's there's very easy ways to counter it. So there's always that as well. I and mean, you can still get stunned. You're not unstoppable, right? So or blinded right. too. But yeah. So Probius got some nerfs too. So if you're sick of seeing Probius. So I'm sure his win rate is gonna take a small dip after these. Uh, so he's got a buff right there on level seven <laughs> and thirteen. What? No. <laughs> yeah, but he did, he did get, I think he got enough little tiny nerfs. Well, let's let's evaluate. Let's talk about all of them first, and then we can talk about if it's a buff or not. So disruption pulse, his Q ability, the damage was decreased from 150 to 142. 
pylon overcharge. That's his ultimate that does the like laser things on the pylons. The damage is reduced from 52 to 48. Uh, level 4 turbocharged. His movement speed bonus is decreased from 20 to 10. Level 7 particle accelerator Q. Damage cap bonus increased from 40 to 50%. Level 13 aggressive matrix. Damage bonus increased from 25 to 35%. Shield battery. Shield amount reduced by roughly 8%. I'm thinking this is a nerf. Looking at it as a whole. Yes, they, they did bump some abilities here, but um, I think it, overall it's a nerf. So so here's why I disagree. All right. The pylon overcharge change, that was a nerf, but that had to be there. But turbocharge, that was a, uh, hey, guys, we don't like you all taking the same talent, so we're going to tweak it. Yeah, sure, it slows you down a little bit, but it, it, like, shield capacitor is just as good, and people weren't taking it because they wanted 20% movement speed. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a nerf. It means people were picking the wrong talent, and now Blizzard is helping you pick the right talent. <laughs> um blizzard wants of, talent parity though right they don't necessarily want to yeah, write the wrong talent sure but like particle accelerator got a buff and but nothing else on the tier got nerfed and that's the least picked talent this is more this is less about buffs and nerfs and more about um we want like you said talent parity right like if you look all of the changes were to either bring the most frequently picked one up or bring the most I'm sorry, bring the most frequently picked up or the most infrequently picked down. I like think every change there. By definition that's almost a nerf because you're like, okay, well, let's nerf the most popular talent and bring up but, some of the other ones that aren't picked to make them more par at parity with the ones that have just so, been nerfed. So here's a philosoph philosophical question for you. Is it really a nerf if the other talents were actually better? But people weren't picking them because they weren't the most frequently picked because the win rate is actually higher with the less frequent picked ones in almost every case so is it really a nerf it's a it's a little like sleight of hand trick <laughs> right that's what you're getting at. i don't i don't know i mean you, you you think that um if they're modifying the talent trees to to get the more talent diversity and nerfing enough, i think there's enough here that they're they've decreased there's enough decreased um, oh no, that one. Uh, the the pylon overcharge, I will agree with you, was a nerf. Everything else, I think, was less of a nerf and more. Let me rephrase that. The first two are nerfs because it's straight damage. The talent ones, I don't think, actually classify as nerfs. Well, you know what? We're gonna have to find out. Maybe we can debate about we might it next debate week. That, dude. <laughs> That's the debate topic. Let's do it. Oh crap! Because yeah, <laughs> <laughs> me and Liquid are on the next throne, debate. Sir. Gauntlet next hot debate so we'll have to see if maybe we'll shake that into a debate topic because we've already started the debate here i know which <laughs> side we're going to be debating too okay let's let's move on from this discussion that's currently going to go nowhere until we can organize our thoughts in an official debate um right, right. let's talk about tassadar mystic you want to talk about tassadar here as our ex support main <laughs> sure all right so tassadar we have um basic attack damage increase from 12 to 15 Man, the Blizzard's really trying to make that tickle beam hurt, right? <laughs> right? I mean, it's it's getting up there. I think it used to be what four damage or something, and now it's more than tripled what it used to be. Yeah. So significant. It, it is now fifteen damage per tick, and I'd like to say it's it's on the threshold from being a tickle beam and being a uh, a poke beam. <laughs> So it actually is going to start to hurt a little bit if, you know, you stand in it for a bit too long. Um, they changed the plasma shield. Now the lifesteal amount is increased from 30% to 45%. Uh, this really helps out um, what Tastar... I think what they're putting Tastar to do, right? They're putting him for, hey, if you have a Vala, pick, pick Tastar. It'll uh, really help because the lifesteal is insane. And then um, if you have an Illidan, uh, same deal. If you have a Tracer, same deal. I think that's what they're trying to... I, I don't want to say pigeonhole them into, but that's kind of what he's used for now, it seems like. Um, level 4, Call is Embrace. Now, this one I feel like is insane. Lifesteal amount increased from 60% to 90%. Now, wait, wait, wait just a second. 90% lifesteal? That's... 
a lot. That's almost one to one with your auto attacks. Like uh, if you have Rainer or something, and um, he now essentially has a when he has that shield on, every time he auto attacks you, he will heal for almost the same amount that he just did to you. That's quite insane. You know what this has done? This is guaranteed that Tastar will be banned every single game at mid-season <laughs> brawl. That's what's. I'm like literally. That's what this change does. I, I hate to say that because I hate to be like come out like coming out with an absolute always feels off to me. Like, hey, guess what? This will definitely happen. But like, what? What? Like you're going into arguably your biggest tournament outside of BlizzCon, and you change Tastar like that? Like, what? All you've done is say, well, we're guaranteeing that Tassadar is banned every game. Which means, now you almost, now, now the mind games come into play, right? Do you ban Tassadar, or do you let the other ban, the other, the second pick team have to ban Tassadar, or give you Tassadar? Right? Like, it, it I, I hate this change so much. I almost feel like Blizzard was like, alright, we want him to be like, the, the support for the auto attackers. But it's just not working. We've no. been increasing the lifesteal for, like, three straight patches. You know what? This, let's just take it over the top and see what <laughs> right. happens. There's, like, right. 60 to 90. 90 is, like, way out there. It's, like, almost ludicrous amounts of lifesteal. It's like, all right, let's see if they pick it now. I mean, could you imagine if you were a tracer and you had a 90% lifesteal shield on you? Like, dude, you'd be, like, like, you, you fire so fast. Like, what? Anybody with 90%, like, a Nubrak at 90% could just walk up and, like, claw you. <laughs> and, like, he's, you know, like, what? What? Why? Yeah. So, so what about counterplay here? Because if they're not, I mean, one of the things they've changed in, in Tastar over the past several rounds of nerfs is that his shield can't be up 100% of the time anymore, right? So you do you do have windows where there will be no shield, and in order to get life steal, you have to be attacking something, too. Is there like some argument to be made that you can still play around this by just staying away from whoever's got a shield on them. for like that one second i know and the problem is with <laughs> tracer she's gonna get in there it's not like you can right, like you can avoid the tracer i'm just trying to right. find a way to get around this or i mean you're double supporting if you're tassadar right so you have a tassadar plus uh a karazim or someone a, a healer that does crazy damage because at that point like why would you not maybe even a taronda although we'll talk about her in a minute so like i okay yeah maybe you ignore the shielded target but the shielded target doesn't have to ignore you all right i think there's there's two types of counterplay here right there's one blind so life steal is uh only applicable to auto attacks right so if you're blind and then if they can't hit you then they don't get the life steal and it's essentially like you know you, you kind of mitigate it out but the other one maybe someone can correct me on this or make sure whatever but i believe they lose the life steal once the shield is broken yeah. so i mean if you want to break the shield and make them lose the life steal you can do that too but essentially tassadar's shield has done its job right it shielded a bunch of damage and if you're right. if you're attacking them just to burst down the shield then <laughs> You know it's done its job well and right. chances are good that they're healed the full when that shield breaks because they had 90 percent life shield life steal the whole time right so like yeah so can three line three lines in a patch note take tastar from garbage to s tier is that what you're you guys are predicting here at least in the pro play i'm predicting he'll be banned i don't know that he'll be s tier but i think he'll be as close as he can the problem is, like like Mystic said, there's some counterplay you can do. But he was already powerful in pro play, right? Like, you saw him banned or taken a lot, except for this past little bit, because Blizzard nerfed him a little too hard. So now it's like... Now Blizzard's like, all right, guys, yeah, we, we screwed up. We nerfed him a little too much. You know what we're going to do? We're going to make him super strong and see what you <laughs> think about that. <laughs> I feel like Blizzard's almost got like a, a task start problem. They're like, damn, why did we release this hero? He's just yeah. impossible <laughs> to balance at all well, levels of play. Shields in general across the game are impossible to balance, right? Like, it, it's hard to balance shields. Medivh yeah. shields, um, Zarya shields. I think now I think both of those characters' shields are balanced better than Tassadar's. But it's just hard to balance shields. It just is. Yeah, well, the, the big problem is that shields are, 
our skill cap, like very you typically high skill cap, require fast reflexes. So in pro play, they're right. always going to be strong. And then if you want to make them not too powerful in pro play, you're, you're nerfing them in in the lower leagues or or even just exactly. regular play, uncoordinated play, um, where it just become so difficult in their win rates as we see in in on hot slogs right now. I think Tastar is down in like the 40s right now, like low 40s, right? right? So right. Um, that's just I guess the way the challenge that Blizzard has in trying to figure out how to circumvent that is always going to be difficult. Now, is it a problem if we have heroes that are just bad in like uncoordinated low skill level environments and and okay in pro play? I don't think so, but I think Blizzard does. I think Blizzard has a problem with that. They want it to be... I don't know. So, I was just thinking. They just reworked Hasidar, and then, I don't know, maybe it hit the mark, maybe it didn't, but, like, you know, he's kind of strong, and then but they're changing all this stuff. So, it reminds me of a, a champion from League of Legends, right? His name is Ryze, and he's, like, a mage that uses lightning. And so far, he's had, like, three reworks, because they were unhappy with like where he ended up almost every re- rework or something and i'm just thinking hey maybe tassadar is that guy and here's the storm <laughs> where they're just like okay so this didn't hit the mark let's let's scrap it and like rework him again <laughs> or something i feel like blizzard's probably got like, like a team of like 10 people working just on Tastar, the Tastar problem trying to figure it out <laughs> i can see him like ripping out the sheet off the wall that didn't work the <laughs> hell like you said yeah, this do time. It again. time to go back to the drawing board boys Okay, so Taronda, I was waiting for some small buffs to her because of how, I, I feel like she was doing okay, but I think her win rate, obviously, in a lot of people's opinions were that she was a little undertuned. She got some slight changes. Uh, Taronda Shadow Stock, uh, that's the, the the new version of Shadow Stock that doesn't give you healing, but just gives you attack speed increase in, in the stealth. Uh, the cooldown was reduced from 30 to 20 seconds fairly significant the mana cost was also reduced as well um what do you guys think of shadow stop before we get into the other changes there too because i mean <clears throat> we were still seeing i feel like starfall generally in maps because it was such a good zoning tool and the problem with that i always found with with shadow stock the new version of it is it's very it's a very greedy talent it's good for Toronto. i mean it can be good for the, the rest of the team too because you're getting more auto attacks off and you can use those for healing and such but it seemed like it wasn't necessarily benefiting the team as much like as a zoning tool like Sha- starfall could do hmm. uh, i believe that yeah starfall was like the more pick talent because like you said it just helps out the team a bunch and shadowstock is the more um greedy talent However, personally, I really like Shadowstock. I think the I think it was in an okay place, and th- these changes like give it a lot more because it they reduced a third of its cooldown. Right, that's just chopped off, and then they gave it a mana cost reduction. I don't I don't think the mana cost reduction was necessary, but the cooldown reduction is great. It's uh, it makes it a lot stronger. I guess the mana cost I mean, has to go in line with the cooldown, so you don't run out of mana <laughs> super quick too. Right? <laughs> 75% of people would disagree and say Starfall is the way to go. So, well, but this is maybe if this change it'll creep back to the other direction. Uh, right? I don't uh if you read Reddit, no, it's not going to change. Right. I mean, tell you with a grain of salt, it's Reddit and Twitter, right? You know, you know what though? Shadow stock. Let's compare that to Windwalk on Samuro, shall we? Like 20 second <laughs> yeah. cooldown versus yeah. what was the cooldown on uh yeah, but- Samuro's now it's now 15 sec 15, 15 yeah. seconds so it's almost similar plus it's perma stealth until you break it right well, you've got, yeah, but you've got increased is... movement speed pretty much mount speed while you're stealth and you've got that crazy almost like taz dingo-esque you know attack speed increase once you break it like it, it seems it's like it might be like getting better three though. autos though it's it's three or four autos when you break it it's not it's it doesn't last that long all right. Well, I think it's it's more than that, isn't it? Isn't it like five seconds with thirty percent increased move, uh, attack speed or fifty? Uh, more. Probably missing my missing the mark here on my numbers. Probably shouldn't be saying stuff just off the top of my head. Maybe we'll take a quick look for that while I go over. Maybe the rest that could here. be uh, your your science lab next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really don't want me to like work some science lab. I was actually thinking one neat thing for um, the science lab would be Diva. Um, her like change to five percent to four percent for her blade of armor just to see like which abilities fall under that uh at different parts of the game anyways that's neither here nor there we're talking about taronda i wonder if that um that bug for diva is still in place i don't know if it's a bug or not but like 
sent when Tychus uses his minigun on Diva and she has um, the ablative armor, it reduces the percentage maximum health damage for whatever reason. Hmm. I didn't see in the patch notes it got fixed, so yeah, you assume it's still there then too. And that I, I know there's been a lot of people saying screaming how bloody murder about that, right? So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they'll probably end up changing that. Um, okay, so you guys want to take through the rest of Toronto's changes, maybe Mystic, while I quickly look up her shadow stock numbers here, just to see what the deal is there. All right, so level one, Ranger change, they added the functionality, and now increases the Sentinel width by 25%. Now, this change is going to help the Owl build, however, I don't know if it's enough. Um, the Owl build, I think, was fairly weak, even though the Owl is, like, I was like okay as an ability, but the ranger talent that's supposed to like stack it up really high is isn't so high. This makes it easier uh, to stack though. One of the yeah. big things that we lost out on with the rework was when you took this talent, whatever level it was previously, level sixteen, I think, where you, you would get the the damage over distance with her. It would increase the the width of the owl a lot too, which made it so you could hit a whole team with it. I feel like the 25% width change is actually like fairly significant. It makes it a little bit easier to stack. But that being said, like you said, the damage might not be there. Um, I did find out the numbers for Shadow Stock. So it's 50% attack speed, and you get the movement speed of 30% after it's been broken for five seconds. So that's that's a significant number of auto attacks. Plus, you know, after the five seconds, you've got a 15-second cooldown to use it again too, right? So anyhow, it's, it's, we'll figure out, I guess, to see once we get a bit more games in to see how that performs. You want to keep going, Mystic? Sorry for interrupting. All right, so there's a change to Ranger's Mark. Basic attacks required uh, has been decreased from 60 to 50 per second of the Hunter's Mark. So originally, you auto attack a hero 60 times and increase your Hunter's Mark by one second for you know every 60 auto attacks. And now it's 50 auto attacks. Uh, and in my opinion, it's a pretty big buff because... Uh, you know, it's like a whole 10, right? And if you add that up, it'll maybe add, uh, let's just say you got two full seconds, maybe maybe three uh, on your Ranger's Mark. And now this will put three seconds at a more reasonable range. So, okay. yeah. I, I want to go back for a second. So you're saying that Shadow Stock gives you a 50% attack speed increase for five seconds? Is that, is that what it was? Yep, 50% attack speed uh, for five right. seconds after self so, so her base attack speed is 1.25 seconds. So if that's the case, then that, that means it's 0.62 seconds, right? Basically, 0.625. Yeah. Um, all right, and if it's five seconds... Okay, so she gets eight auto attacks out of that, assuming you can stay on target for the entire five-second duration. Yep, and the movement speed too. So, uh, assuming you stay on target, that's that's a significant amount of damage plus extra have, healing you get too from reducing your cooldowns. Have you ever tried stutter stepping with a point six two five attack speed <laughs> hero? It's like freaking impossible. So, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, that movement speed doesn't mean jack. If you're chasing them, you ain't shooting them. Yeah, but in a, in a chaotic team fight, it can be, be important. I'm not well, saying yeah, no, I'm not no, saying it's sure, be, it's sure. something that should be taken. I'm just saying it's not something that might not yeah, yeah. be discounted. No, no, I'm just. My, my, my point is just Starfall ends up being still so much more powerful, yeah. right? Yeah, it, it, it's like the Pyroblast Phoenix thing, right? Like, right, right. Like, Pyroblast is great in certain situations, but Phoenix is just such a powerful zoning I, tool. I would actually say Pyroblast is more is taken more often and more frequently correctly than Shadowstalk would be. Yeah. <laughs> just because there's so many low hero, low hit point heroes in the game now that that uh, Pyroblast can actually kill. Yeah, so. maybe maybe take Shadowstock in a situation where you have a KT on the team and you already have a Phoenix to zone, right, or something along yeah, those yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, Battlefield of yeah. Eternity too. You get the extra six auto attacks off on your uh, on the Immortal on while the, it's yeah, yeah. while you got your right. deactivated on it too. So not only right. you're doing you could doing twenty five percent extra bonus damage for those extra six auto attacks that you get off too, and you can stand still, right? You don't have to stutter right, step right, right. with that Immortal. No, no, there's there's some definite yeah. places for it. I just in general, I think Starfall is still the better one to take. Yep, but either way, this I'm sure will will slightly shift, if not greatly shift the the uh, the pick rate. Like I mean, yes. it's obviously yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a clear bot. percent right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, no, I think it'll get closer. But you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm still gonna be taking Starfall all the time because it is also the lower skill cap 
one as right. well too right it's a drop it on the to ground use. and walk away yeah right? <laughs> yeah a lot of fun a lot of use for those um so mystic you've been a big purveyor of the hunter's mark build for Toronto, we also have a level seven talent change as well. The augment, which I feel like is just a reversion of what we had in um, the PTR for a bit. Huntress's Fury at level seven. That's where you, you got splash damage from your mm-hmm. Hunter's Mark target. The range has been increased by roughly 30%. Because I remember in the PTR, it was considered to be broken. Then they reduced the range. Now I guess they're bringing the range back up. What do you think about that change? Uh, well, in the, P- in the PTR, it also hit minions. Because mm-hmm. if you uh, you could clear out really well, and they took that away, and then they reduced the range. But um, I feel like this is it'll feel much better now because if you hunters mark like their front line, and then any melee around that target, or even if you hunters mark a melee, right, melee or tank, then you can hit um, all the other people around. That it, it'll feel much better. I, uh, I have a question. Hmm? Straight because the two of you play this Toronto way more than I do. Her Huntress Fury is an 8% pick rate right now. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, this change went in today. Uh, do you think that's enough to have people pick that over True Shot Aura or Darnassian Archery, which are the two, True Shot Aura being 60%, Darnassian Archery being 31.8? I really like I think it. this change is enough to do that. In my opinion, I think it'll raise the pick rate of this talent to roughly 13 (laughs) percent okay all right fair enough i i agree i i think true shot aura is a very powerful talent not only that it's a passive i mean it's got an active field component to it but passives are the easiest ones in terms of skill cap to pull off i mean there is a bit of positioning involved because you have to be nearby your heroes that you're that you're doing here but if you're talking about 10 percent auto attack buff to you know essentially your team or whoever's around you that's a fairly significant bit it's almost like half a hunter's mark right, right. On, on target so that's pretty significant plus you can you can activate it to get 20 percent, and you can really augment the damage so that, that's why i was struggling with this change right like I, and i'm trying to think of a good reason to take this and i was i, I was thinking well maybe i'm boe because you throw your mark on the uh immortal right and you attack the immortal and if the other team tries to defend they're going to take a little bit of splash damage but then is that splash damage really worth more because you're putting damage on the immortal and you're splashing them versus hey my entire team has a flat 10 percent across the board like i struggle to see where that trade-off would ever work <laughs> yeah i guess the only way potentially is uh if you get your hunter's mark from level one um ranger's mark talent so that it, it extends so long that you know you're attacking you're getting the cooldowns and it's got a long length to it you pretty much can hunter's mark something all the time where you can potentially get splash damage perpetually throughout a team fight but even then like you said like you still have to overcome 10 percent across your right. team which is i think a tough thing to overcome the, the place i think this fit is where it was on ptr when it would affect minions yeah with it affecting have... minions it gives her wave clear mm-hmm. yeah that's when people would take it with, without that wave clear i feel like it's just useless it's, it's like leaming's calamity nerf all over again <laughs> they, they just don't want to give way a way to come back to that i hate that so much <laughs> they just don't want to give wave clear to certain heroes they want to make sure okay toronto is yeah. not a wave clear hero we don't want to give her an option to be able to do that and that would be right, right? like if if it her attacks changed all the nearby minions uh it's a pretty fast way to clear a wave right um yeah so we guess we'll have to see how that shakes out but do you think that in general mystic the d build is still the way to go here do you think there's any argument for the owl build now i guess there's not many owl talents really when you look at it there's really only one at one and there's the level 13 bit where i guess you can get reduced the cooldown every time it hits a hero i mean the owl build will certainly be stronger because of the width change however i personally like still like the d build uh the owl build though I feel See, like it'll rise in popularity a I, little bit. I feel like at level 13, too, you, you almost take the Owl Talon, even if you're not going an Owl build. Mm-hmm. The, the one that's Harsh Moonlight, where it slows the target by 30%, reduces its damage up by 30% for four seconds. Because even without the 25% width, like you're still getting a lot of utility there. If someone's yeah. on you, you 
toss it on, suddenly you're doing 3% less damage, right? Like you're talking like a Nova triple tap or something, you hit her with that owl, it's doing a lot less damage. Plus they're slowed. Plus it can actually hit a whole team too later game too after you've stacked your owls. So it just, I mean, you're going to take that anyways almost. <laughs> like now really we're only talking about a level one talent, unless you're looking at the other 13 talent where you reduce the cooldown, but um, based on how many heroes you hit with your owl. But I still feel like that, that damage mitigation you get from harsh moonlight at 13 is just so powerful yeah yeah who knows hopefully toronto will see a bit of an upswing here the problem is i'm looking at these talents i'm thinking the only thing that really benefits me here is probably the rangers mark change might get an extra second on my hunters marks from this like you said too um because right. usually that's what i took at level one i know a lot of people like to take the lunar flare stacking talent but i do like the rangers mark talent Okay. So should we just skip the next two? Because <laughs> we're getting into tanks, and this is liquid section. So, liquid, you want to taste through a new brack and what your beef is here? So, so I kind of popped off on both of these, uh, a new brack and a haka. I, I, I will cover them one at a time, but I feel like they're related because we we nerfed a tank that was in a pretty good place, a new brack, and we buffed a tank, the haka, who's picked like every game, <laughs> and did not need a buff. And I just don't, it feels bad, man. Like, I get that the new Barak was probably overpowered and needed to be nerfed a little, but Dahaka did not need a buff. Um, all right, so so now that I've gone over that, let's go into the changes. So, Burrow Charge's cooldown was increased from 12 to 14 seconds. Hated it, but we got to deal with that. Okay, fine. Blizzard thinks we can get away too easily. I don't buy it, especially after the, uh, the change where he was completely uh, unstoppable when he, or uh, not unstoppable. Yeah, it was. It was unstoppable, right? Yeah, yeah, it was unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. I, after that nerf, like, Burrow Charger, I feel like was in a great place, but what do I know? Oh, before uh, that, it was invulnerable, wasn't it? Invulnerable. <laughs> That's what it was. It was invulnerable. That's what I was thinking of. I miss those days. Well, they did um, change it to unstoppable, though. Like. Yeah, yeah, that's where it's at now. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, Murden, God rest his soul, not unstoppable when he leaps anymore. <laughs> that's horrible. Uh, all right, so Burrow Charge is now 14 You seconds. talk about me and the Calamity stuff. Dude. You've got your beefs, too. <laughs> I, I know I do. I know I do, man. That's why we work well together, because we, <laughs> we both have those little things. And for me, it's tank changes. Um, Bed of Barbs. His movement slow was reduced from 30 to 25%. This needed to be taken uh, or changed. Really, that was, like, almost the go-to talent. In fact, I'm pulling him up right now just to see what that pick rate was. I feel like I never picked that because I always liked Under King personally, but that had a 60% pick rate. So that one was going to be nerfed just so other things are picked on that tier at level four. Uh, level 16, epicenter of the cooldown reduction was decreased from 1.5 to 1.25. I mean, that makes sense if you're going to increase the amount of time it takes for Burrow Charge's um, cooldown to increase. You have to modify the talent as well. That reduces that cooldown. Um, Personally, I find it weird when they do these like half and quarter of a second kind of cooldowns. It's hard as a player. Like I know the cooldown just because I play him all the time. Um, he's I think he's like my second most played warrior over the last couple of weeks after the great ETC nerf of uh, 2017 <laughs> when my cow was put out to pasture. Um, but like the 1.25 second, like I don't know, it just feels weird. Like they don't note that it's 0.25 seconds, so make it one or make it two like is there really a need for a quarter of a second difference obviously blizzard thinks there is um so the nerfs really will take a noob down a peg one of the things we we're going to talk about tonight uh on troll and hcc is how strong a noob rack was in the crucible i mean he was involved in almost every single game in the crucible um and he was super powerful there oh, so wait. so does it help that the cooldown reduction decreased from 1.5 to one point? Two five per hero hit, right? Just to clear that. Right, right, right. That yeah, for yeah. Per hero hit, correct. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Which is what makes that even more confusing, because the the math is just like, I don't know, whatever. Blizzard had a reason behind it. It's cool. Yeah. Um, it goes along with the change. I just I feel like it's, I don't know. I feel like it's weird. Uh. So Nubrak got nerfed. And then Dahaka got buffed. Dahaka, the number one choice. For a global on a map that needs a global, got buffed. Uh, GG no re Blizzard? Like really? <laughs> uh, all right. So Dark Swarm, its duration was increased from three to three point five seconds. Like really? What? No, I can't believe that. All right. Okay. Brush Stalker, <laughs> the movement speed buff duration increased from one to two seconds. 
and the amount increased from 15 to 20 percent this one i kind of get like all right like a one to two like let the guy get out of the bush at least right like if you if you burrowed in at the back of the bush by the time one second was up you just got out of the bush <laughs> so so this one i actually kind of agree with well then... whoa there I, I don't know if i want him rushing me <laughs> and have a 0.5 second increase on his dark brush, swarm right <laughs> well here's the problem with that 0.5 seconds that 0.5 seconds makes it that much easier for him to clear right like he had to usually uh, auto one or two of the minions that were left but the extra half a second he'll be able to clear the whole wave um, i haven't had a chance to test it yet mainly because i was trying to make sure i had everything ready for trolling hcc tonight um so i have not actually played it on this patch so i don't know if that's correct but that's one of the things i want to test but then enhanced agility which is a level one talent that buffs his trait the movement speed buff duration went from three seconds to five seconds now this one actually like i i was like wait what like what just happened um this is the one that's like blizzard why so so now he'll have seven seconds of movement speed increase when he brush stalks wait no i think i got that wrong hold on i think it's only the I think it's only the five seconds but yeah because it replaces the i'm trying to make sure see see blizzard this is why you don't discuss patch notes without actually playing the hero that night <laughs> so <laughs> while while you're looking that up too i mean dehaka he does have a lower win rate ever since he got his most recent set of like changes so i mean we're talking about how he is one of the stronger globals but obviously people are losing with him in general more than winning so maybe this was needed at least in like regular play not pro play i it may be all right so so we've had this discussion on the show in the past right i watch so much pro play that i tend to blur the line between like what players like us and how we play versus like i i watch games like all day almost every day right mm -hmm. um so, so you could be right. I just, I feel, it feels weird that you're gonna buff something that in pro play is so strong to help, like, like this gets into the other conversation we had even earlier. Do you need to, isn't it okay to have a hero perform at two different rates at two different levels? Like at pro play, if this hero is like super strong and at pub play, if the hero is not super strong, is that okay? Like, do you have to make them try to equal each other out? Because this is just gonna make him like Tassadar first pit first ban like you cannot let him through uh, five seconds and it is five seconds total it replaces the instead of two seconds after your brush stalker it is now five seconds after your brush stalker like that's a long time i can you can brush stalker in run to a hero drag him back and be um that's a whole shadow stock time, right mm -hmm. right like yeah. that's it's a good amount of time there so uh yeah i don't know to, i i got into some twitter stuff like it it this this just feels bad like i'm just not happy with it it's i'm sure it's good for the hero overall i just it feels weird to like buff the haka who because of the amount of games i watched and because uh when when shizen used to play with us on, in unstable and we put him on the haka on maps at need global we dominated those games because the haka is a really like i would rate the haka higher than brightwing and higher than falstad as a global character a hundred percent without a question in my mind just like i would rate Zarya higher as a shielding character than anybody else because the amount of utility they then also bring with them makes them the best global character the best shielding character um buffing the best at anything but then nerfing a tank that's that's doing good but not like crazy op just feels weird in the same patch i don't I, and that's i don't know that's my problem with with these two changes yeah, and this always goes back to the challenge that blizzard has right like they're trying right. to buff Dahaka and just generally but still making sure i get i mean i guess maybe they're not making sure they won't be too strong in in pro play but uh, that's what they have to struggle with they have to make sure that it's good across all levels so diva got some oh. changes too boys i have something to tell you oh boys what i don't is remember it? if i told you last week i'm a diva believer did i mention <laughs> that last week a de believer I a diva, a, yeah, a diva no, believer? No, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to make <laughs> yeah, that. I, I don't think you did. I think uh, you were saying last week that 
You, you don't know about D.Va. She All might right. not be your play style. Such and such. <laughs> I'm a D.Va believer now. Uh, I played her with my wife a couple games. Oh, my God. She's so much fun. <laughs> I am a total D.Va believer. One of my uh, team league buddies, uh, he's saying he's going, he wants to get D.Va to 100 because he just loves playing her so much. <laughs> pretty much every team league, he's like, I'm taking D.Va. I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. She's pretty. She can do her. She can do some disruption, yeah. which is what she's for, right? So. But, oh, which one's taking her every game? I'm just curious. I total total side note, but oh, on our, on our team league, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's Decro. Yeah, he's one of that's our the kind of flex. That's the old Probius guy, right? Nope, nope, or not the Probius guy. He's kind of our our flexy type role. So he usually plays okay. Bruiser. Okay. Cool. Um, but anyways, no, no, you want... he was the, he was the Probius guy. I thought he was too. Duroc. very similar names. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's... oh. All right, all right, cool. cool. Yeah, he's st- he's still on Probius. He'll get Probius level 100. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> he's he's actually probably close to level fifty with them by now. Okay, so Liquid, do you want to take us through Diva then as well? Since sure, sure, I can do that. I can do that now that I'm a deliver according to yeah. uh, Scud's magazine chat. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, boosters, cool uh, boosters. Uh, the Q cooldown reduced from ten to nine seconds, and cooldown before being able to cancel the ability decreased from one to point five seconds. Both critically needed changes. Um, the the one second cooldown reduction not a huge deal, but definitely nice to have the ability to cancel the the ability to cancel the ability <laughs> after 0.5 seconds instead of one second though is important to me um because there were times where i'd boost and then i got the knockback that i wanted to get but i wanted to cancel like uh two on one situation where you just want that quick knockback and then you want to engage immediately but you're stuck for that extra half second until you can you know hit the button again so that was I- i'm glad those were there um, level one hit the nitrous, which is her buff to her Q. Movement speed reduced from 375 to 325%, and the tooltip was adjusted to show the movement speed bonus instead of the total speed. That needed to be that. That was more of a quality of life, so you understood what you were taking. Um, I also think the 375 was a little ridiculous, so 325 made sense. Um, also at level one, pro moves, which is the passive movement speed duration increased from one to 1.25 seconds. Um, I was mostly going with, I want to say, hit the nitrous, even though on our show last week we said hit the nitrous was not the talent to take. I, I was going with it. Everybody's going. It's like 75% pick rate. Everybody's taking <laughs> Like, come it, on. It, it is fun. I feel like it has become, like, the thing that most people take even to win, right? Uh, right. Even though I don't think people see the – it's so much better than pro moves for like just quick engages right whereas pro moves is like more team fight oriented right well and if you're not playing in a full five man it doesn't make sense to go the other talents like if you're if you're pubbing it up i I think hit the nitrous is just the way to go um but level 13 all right so a blade of armor the passive they have reduced the threshold where a blade of armor is active from five percent to four percent of diva's maximum health uh nice change i don't think that's going to make a huge difference one way or the other um, that tier is actually pick one, whichever you, you like best. Well, um, hold hold I, on, hold on. A Blade of Armor, the 5 to 4% may be significant because you're essentially, like, turning off potential abilities, right? Like, if something was, like, a Leaming Missile, say, if it was doing 4.5% yeah. damage to you, suddenly you're not getting any damage mitigation. You're not getting so any damage mitigation. So the question is, place. how many things fall in that range? Well, Obviously, there's a lot so, of factors, but... So the interesting thing was, I was going to bring this up off camera, that's actually what I think we need to figure out for our next show yeah where what what's in the four percent what's in the five percent not for a science lab but we like we just need to look that up because on paper it's not a big change but like you just said anything over four percent is now not being adjusted for a blade of armor but i think this was needed because and and here's why i'm okay with this change and why i kind of breeze through it um she was super super tanky with this like as soon as she got it like nothing hurt you at that point like post 13 you were just like bring it right especially if you were hitting him with um man what's it called her little shieldy thing that she puts out her uh defensive uh, matrix yeah that sorry i can never remember the name of that skill but if you threw that out like between that and your blade of armor like you just took no no damage Um, let's put this in the show notes uh it's something that um somebody on reddit was doing and I, uh, I, it shows most it. of the stuff there. I'm oh, perfect. Right, and I, I haven't had a chance to actually read it, but yeah, check out the show notes. That'll have that. Um, all right, so level 16, good game well played, which was her buff to her E. The damage bonus was reduced from 75% to 50%. Uh, 
I took that all the time. So here's the funny thing. I know we talked last week, and I was like, ah, oh, this is Diva's not my play style. Like, this whole getting out of my mech, like, I can't do it, blah, 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 right? Dude, I was blowing up my mech left and right and popping out mm -hmm. and, like, pew, 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 with them lasers. So much fun. Like, I literally took pew, pew, pew every game because I was like, this is the best. And, oh, my God, <laughs> so much fun. All right, so, but the damage reduction had to be done. Like, it was, like, just so much you would literally, I was just like, as soon as I could jump out of my, my mech, I was like, all right, I'm out at post 16. And I'd just be sitting there like lasering as hard <laughs> as I could. Well, so like, I totally like that, that change also just like a blade of armor. I think that change needed to be made. Well, the talent so, name was appropriate, right? Good game. Well played. You right. took that. You oh, went. No, it was definitely, you got to 16, you took that talent and the game was over. You were just like, you just rolled through people. So yeah, I, I like her though. She's a lot of fun to play now. Yeah. She does have a neat play style. As long as you're like jumping back and forth. If you're sitting in mech yeah. form, it can be a little, little boring sometimes. But yeah, like you can. There's a lot you can do as Diva. In, in oh my god, Genji is like my bane though. I have such a hard time stopping attacking when he pops his little <laughs> shield thing. <laughs> so how about your cow here? You got some uh, small Jesus. buffs. Small buffs. No, no. This is. Hey man, you know what we did? ETC, we we uh, fertilized the grass so that it'll be greener while you eat it out in your pasture. <laughs> um, all right, so they increased his attack speed. Woo! Um, I, you know what? So this needed to be done. His attack speed needed to go up. I don't think it's gone up enough because all of his skills used to buff his attack speed, right? And so they nerfed all that and they changed all that when they reworked him. And I still don't like calling that Wait a rework, a but whatever. Are we forgetting something? <laughs> what? No, no, no. It was just, I was making right? a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah, they it was forgot like, to oh, buff yeah, his totally attack speed. To buff his attack <laughs> speed. We took away his ability's chance to buff his attack speed by a lot, and we only buffed it a little bit when we did that. <laughs> um, so, so, and then they also did the cooldown reduction per basic attack, reduced from one to points. I'm sorry, let me start that over. On level 16, Aggressive shedding was the talent that you could pick and I used to pick that all the time because I liked it uh, Which would reduce the cooldown of your heal your E um, Per basic attack. Well Blizzard said hey, you know what now that we're increasing his attack speed We should totally reduce how much this cooldown is from 1 to 0.75 that makes a ton of sense and I'm like What like really like you have? this tank who was for a long time the strongest tank in the game he's still my second favorite tank my favorite being diablo second favorite tank is etc i never play him because it just feels so weak now and they're like yeah we're gonna speed up his attack speed because he totally needs that but you know what when we do that we're totally gonna nerf his e talent aggressive shredding because eh, who cares if he can heal more a little bit it's like dude like like that was your chance to make him a little bit better so that maybe he got more play by leaving the cooldown reduction at one second. Because all you're doing is every five auto attacks, you're you're decreasing the cooldown by one full second, right? So Blizzard, like really, every five auto attacks, he attacks slow as hell anyway, even at 1.25, he's still super slow. So did you really have to do that? No, you really didn't, but you did anyway because you like your cow out to pasture. And that's why it's Blizzard saying, you know what? We freshly fertilized the pasture so that your grass will be greener while you eat. So keep tuned for Liquid spin-off show. Whatever <laughs> happened to ETC? Because, <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Dude. I thought I was mad about the calamity change to Li Ming, but the, <laughs> we start talking about ETC. Liquid. If I had any artistic talent at all, I would do, like, a little animated series. <laughs> Blizzard's nerf tanks. And I would get, like, Muradin... And like Tyrael and ETC in a room together, and like they would just, they would be like Alcoholics Anonymous, right? <laughs> it would be, it would be like Nerf Tanks Anonymous, right? And they would like take, like, if, I, I would totally do a show about that. If I, if I had enough artistic talent to be able to do it, I would totally, totally, totally do it. Okay, listeners, the cha there's a challenge right there. If any of you has some artistic talent, you can put together a little comic strip for Liquid mm -hmm. and put it up on Reddit tomorrow, please. <laughs> we'll make sure we see it. Or hit me up. I'll be happy to work with whoever that is that wants to. Maybe you want to do a regular series about Nerf Tanks Anonymous. <laughs> I mean, hit me up. Because it's not like I have that much. I mean, I I have a ton going on. But, you know, I love tanks. Yep. Okay, so 
Mystic Shakedown, we're going to leave this week, and we're going to return next week. Um, so we're just going to take a little bit of hiatus there. Uh, but I think this is probably where we're going to wrap up the show. And just a quick reminder, we do have a new show debuting very shortly after this one in half an hour. Uh, it's going to be Troll and HGC, hosted by Liquid and Bags, who's hanging out in the chat right now. That's going to exclusively talk about the esports scene around heroes, amateur, pro, etc. So keep tuned, and that will be coming on shortly. Um, but thanks, everyone, for listening to the Nexus Trolls, the Heroes of the Storm podcast. We stream this live on our Twitch channel, which just changed this week to twitch.tv slash trollsgg, which is also where um, Troll and HGC is going to be streamed from as well, uh, every week on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. So, Liquid, where can people find you on this fabulous interweb as we found ourselves on? So your best bet is to follow me on Twitter. That's at liquidgg, L-I-Q-I-U-D-G-G. -G. Um, you can also follow me on Twitch. Um, also, liquidgg, L-I-Q-I-U-D-G-G. -G. Um, we are actually going to I'm going to start streaming more uh, in the off season. Um, my wife and I are going to do a little experiment. She wants to do some team league games. So we're going to do some team league games uh, and I'm going to stream said team league games. We're going to be Ooh. queuing as a duo. Uh, I will be using my secondary account and we will be uh, uh, doing those things. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. She'll be on comm so that you guys can actually hear me screaming. Hit your R, hit your R. Because she mm -hmm. plays a healer. Um, but yeah, so that, that'll that be fun. Uh, also, Mystic and I cast chair league games together. We cast HTC Open Division. Both of those are on hiatus right now. Obviously, HTC Open Division isn't happening until Phase 2 starts. Um, and chair league, lots of cool, cool changes that uh, Super Jova is working on right now. Um, that we're, we're rewriting a lot of the rules. Uh, the league format is completely changing. So that when that comes back, that'll be pretty interesting too. So... TM um, follow me on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, TM soon, definitely, right? Soon TM, rather. Yeah. Um, also, Mr. Skills in chat, uh, we will totally be covering, like, esports going forward. Episode one is tonight, and, like, we're going to keep going through midseason brawl, through phase two, covering pro, covering HEC, covering amateur, everything. So definitely check that out, too. Sorry, I gotta pimp that a little bit now because brand new. Oh, show for sure, we, we gotta pimp it. I can't wait to watch it too. I'm I get so to, excited. I get to sit on the sidelines and watch it in the chat room and heckle you guys from the stands there too. <laughs> Maybe me and Mystic will be there like the guys from the Muppet Show <laughs> in, the, in the corner there. Um, so Mystic, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Mystic Shroud. <laughs> you you may have to look really hard because <laughs> he tweeted again at the beginning of the show. What? Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Was that? Yeah. Are you up to like what two or three tweets now? Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. I'm I'm working on it slowly. <laughs> <laughs> so feed Mystic's addiction by following him at at Mystic Shroud on Twitter. And uh, Wait, I have to ask you a question because because this this is. <laughs> Daz, how many Twitter accounts are you managing now? Oh, God. Well, we just started an <laughs> at TrollsGG one. We got at the Nexus Trolls, and I got at Daz Hots. I've also got my personal account, too, which I will not disclose here, but you can probably find it if you're a, an enterprising individual. <laughs> so mm -hmm. enough that it's making my head blown, and I don't use Twitter frequently enough as is to try and keep it up there. But right. thankfully, I got Mystic. Thankfully, I got, up, buddy. I got liquid. Sorry, go I got liquid in my corner, though. I gave him access to like the the general like trolls, GG, Nexus trolls, all that kind of stuff. But you've got probably more than I do now. That you've got troll and HGC no, no, too. I'm, uh, let's see. I have I have mine. I have troll and HGC, uh, trolls, GG, and the the Nexus trolls. Um, and then I also have a personal one that if people try hard enough, they can probably find. But I really don't tweet from the personal one. So. Yeah, same here. I just have it there for like professional reasons. But I mean, the, you wonder what how Twitter has so many like active monthly users. It's because of people like right. us uh, who have like so many damn accounts and have to manage them all for whatever reason. But you can follow us on any of those, uh, which we just previously mentioned. Um, so I also want to thank our Patreon supporters. If you like this show and you're looking for a way to support us, you can head over to patreon.com slash trollsgg and support us there. That'll also be the site that you can support Troll and HGC as well. It's just a generic catch-all for all our shows. Uh, you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you happen to find your podcasts online. You can also visit our website, which the address just recently changed as well. It went from thenexustrolls.com to trollsgg slash thenexustrolls because we now have a podcast network called the Trolls GG or Trolls GG. Uh, thenexustrolls.com will still take you there. It just redirects currently as we phase it out. So you can watch this or past shows along with past video streams, which can also be found on our YouTube channel. 
And for announcements about the show and general Here's the Storm news, you can follow us on Twitter at, at the Nexus Trolls. And finally, if you need to get in touch with us, the best way is by our new email at the Nexus Trolls at Trolls GG. I got to get used to the, the new roundup here because there's a few little things that have changed. Um, we only changed a couple of things. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long week of changing emails, changing domains and everything, but we're getting there. We're consolidating everything under the Trolls GG brand. Anyhow, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Mystic Liquid, thanks again for hosting with me. Have a great week, everybody. I almost forgot to mention, too, uh, sorry for delaying the show a little bit longer here, we changed the chat channel in-game from the Nexus Trolls, so slash join the Nexus Trolls, to slash join Trolls GG. I gotta put that in the outro as well. So if you hang out in the Nexus Trolls chat channel in-game, I'll, I'll be lurking about there for a bit, trying to like nudge people into Trolls GG, but we want to make sure we've got like more of a catch-all chat channel as well. But anyways, again, thanks everybody for listening. <laughs>